Hello, everybody. Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 104 to 103 win against the Boston Celtics. Riker, where we're starting it off right now, the spicy PLA of the day. We're gonna have to change this to another OG segment because that shot, right now, that tops Kawhi's. The right, like the excitement, the the moment, how the Raptors need it. It's not Game Seven, but oh my God, oh my God, Riker. Ben, I want to inject that swagger into my bones. I, I, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna bottle it up and and wear it as a cologne. Ben, I wanna blend it, make it a shampoo, and just smell it all day long. That a walk off, 0.5 seconds left, three. <laughs> like Ben, it, it can't get more clutch. It cannot it get more clutch. Period. It can't. The, the OG and OB, 0.5 seconds, as you mentioned, the Raptors are down. The Raptors are, are losing this game. If we lose, it, or, you know, we're, we're, to the Kawhi shot, it was tied. We went to OT. The Raptors are down in this one. If we lost that, we're down 0-3. There's no way we're coming back from that. And OG, I don't know. First of all, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry with that pass. Taco Fall. He threw it over a 7'6 taco stand. Cross court. Perfectly in the shot pocket. OG Ananobi catches it in the corner, lets it fly. I believe it's over Jalen Brown. I don't even know. It flashed before my eyes, but I knew it was in. I knew it was in from the second. OG Ananobi hit a clutch shot against Cle in Cleveland in his rookie year in that game three, and then Le it got overshadowed by LeBron's floater. This was revenge. People were saying on Twitter that this game reminded people of the, the 2018 Cavs Raptors series, but... OG Ananobi made up for those demons when LeBron hit that floater over his face and just I I, I couldn't believe it. Oh OG is the GOAT man. He is the OG, GOAT. He reached out his hand, Ben. He reached, he stretched his hand and just he just took the Raptors. He embraced them <laughs> gently and just lifted them up up towards the heavens and said, I will win this game for us. Just just let me, just let me shoot that shot, Ben. I, I, it's hard. It's hard to, it's hard to respond to a win like this, Ben, because it, it cannot get more clutch. It can't. No. And you watch that Bucks Heat game, and there was three levels of clutch free throws. There was free throws mm -hmm. to pad the lead. Then there was free throws to tie the game. Then there was free throws to win the game. This is a whole other ballpark. Down to no time left. Over seven five seven six taco fall over elevated Jalen Brown, and the walk off Ben, the walk off, in typical uh, OG fashion. It, it, this was the most perfect finish I've ever seen, and a bad game, but a perfect finish. Man, it, yeah, I think I might have said down one. We were down two. OG splashes a three. I just I couldn't I. OG's been my guy. He's been my ride or die player. Obviously, Lowry's Lowry's. Been, I say it on the podcast all the time. Lowry's my favorite player, but OG's OG second man. He, I just love backing that guy up. His athleticism, his grittiness, and man, the fact that he was the one to knock that thing down. Just and as you said, the face that he made. It was too much. It was it was overwhelming. Young Kawhi. That nickname is officially back. We we said it all his rookie year. Then it kind of flew out the window well the nickname seemed to leave once Kawhi came because we had the real Kawhi but OG's better than Kawhi man not obviously I'm hyperbolizing but his defense the whole game to hit that shot to be clutch it's remarkable got 10 rebounds 12 points in this game but you know for all of OG's heroics none of it happens without the non-hyperbolized the Toronto Raptors go Kyle Lowry because he kept us in this game. He was just attacking. You and I were saying on the podcast that the Celtics were trapping people high and keep it, forcing the Raptors into tough, long shots, but Kyle Lowry was not settling for anything in this game, and despite being in foul trouble, just took over. He absolutely took over. 31 points, 8 assists, 6 rebounds, three, 13 of 23 from the field. Just OG and Lowry, man. Shout out to those guys. Shout well, out ben, to those guys. Yeah, shout out to those guys. Ben, how many free throws did Lowry have this game? Because I don't... Most of his layups, he just made in contact, but no mm -hmm. whistle. Tremendous body control. We know Lowry has the capacity to finish in the lane. He just... He likes to shoot the three. And in a series mm -hmm. where they have been plagued, it's like three games straight of Game 7 Houston Rockets. That's, you know, yeah. that over 27 team from three. That's how the Raptors have been playing from distance. And, and, and finally, finally it dawns on them, hey, how about we just go inside a little <laughs> bit? You know, how about we just take some layups? You know, 
make them come to us and challenge us yeah. at the basket. And for whatever reason, it has to be done by the smallest guy on the Toronto Raptors team, the smallest guy on the floor. And he, I don't know, he must have scored 10, 15 buckets in the paint tonight, Ben. What a masterful performance. Yeah, he, he orchestrated the offense, really just just took over. And we got to give credit to the, the Boston Celtics. They played a pretty solid game in this one as well. Their defense has been great the whole entire series. But I, I've been saying, and you know, we we were obviously down 0-2, and some people said it. We had a wave of Boston Celtics fans. I'm sure they won't be on this podcast to talk about the last one. But I'm confident this one is in six. And especially with a momentum swinger like that, a shot like that can completely just switch players' mindsets. We saw Siakam actually really step up his game in the second half. Had a really poor start to this one, but even though he wasn't perfect, you know, the, the prime Pascal Siakam we saw, he definitely stepped up his game in the second half. I believe he had two going to the half, ended with 16 and 7. But if we have Lowry attacking strong, Fred able to knock down most of his threes, or more of his threes tonight, 5 of 13 from the field, but hit some big ones, 25 points for Fred. You know, Lowry playing at a high level. Norman Powell, if he gets a few more minutes. Nick Nurse really ran a tight, tight rotation tonight. Ran really six guys. Norman Powell only played 15 minutes. Matt Thomas got about six. But if we just have our guys playing and, you know, we can talk about some things. I think we we should have, like, a more level-headed podcast maybe after, you know, tomorrow or something about the rest of the series. But I'm confident, man. Raps in six. Raps in six, Riker. Raps in six. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna take your confidence. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> strip that swagger, Ben. That OG swagger. I do want to say, Marcus Smart. There was a plus 500 comments. I was disappointed in our fan base because they weren't standing up for the Raptors <laughs> last game. All 500 plus 500 comments were all Celtics fans, but they were they were upset <gasps> that we didn't give credit to Marcus Smart, the three point shooter. You know what? Even if he's an improved, I'm using air quotations here. I realize nobody can tell that. <laughs> I'm using air quotations. Even though he's an improved three-point shooter, no air quotations. Even the best three-point shooter in the league is not going to hit on any night, on any given night, five for five from three contested in the clutch moments. That's luck. Yep. He can be improved as you want. That was lucky. He's never going to do that again in this series or the next. He's not going five for five in the fourth. Not going to happen. Knock on wood. Same thing knock on wood. you could Yeah, knock on wood for real. <laughs> you could say the same thing about tonight's shot. You know, the Raptors would very probably nine times out of ten lose in a .5 second down by two situation, right? Raptors got <laughs> yep. lucky this time. Now, settle down. Win the next mm -hmm. game. Because as far yeah. as I can see, Ben, and this is the point that I want to make, because I, I unfortunately had to watch the TNT stream tonight. Oh, geez. The score was 64-62 for the Boston Celtics. All game long, all the announcers were saying was, man, they're missing all Raptors. They're missing all their three-pointers. Oh, man, they're not playing like they could be able to play. There was no criticisms on the on the Boston side. So as good as Boston can play is basically even to the Raptors playing as bad as they can play from the, you know, the neutral commentators. So if the Raptors mm -hmm. can elevate their offense this series, it's possible for them to win. Yeah, for sure. I think Tatum is definitely due for maybe a bigger game. He had a big game in game two, but like they did, the Celtics didn't play perfect by any means, but I, I'm I'm in full agreement. I just think the Raptors have been really underperforming, and you, uh, you got to give credit to Brad Stevens and the Celtics defense. That's definitely a large part of it, but a, a large chunk of it from just from the eye test, you see the Raptors just missing a lot of shots they usually make. So that's why I still have that confidence. And when we have the confidence in the Raptors, it's not to discredit the Celtics. We know the Celtics are a good team, and obviously we are a Toronto Raptors podcast. That's who we we talk talk about too. So. You know, that's that's why we talk about them more. But I, I'm confident the Raptors can do this. Now, with a momentum swinger like that and just everything going on, I'm – and Serge Ibaka has been phenomenal in these playoffs, and he really struggled tonight as well. Uh, I just – I'm really confident in this Toronto Raptors team. And, yeah, OG – Lowry and OG, 46 and 45 minutes tonight. Riker, are you in agreement with this really – because you're – more assertive on the Raptors running a tighter rotation than I usually am, but they, the Raptors went really tight. What are your thoughts on maybe going forward? Because I think Boucher, especially when Gasol and Ibaka, especially when Ibaka's struggling, because Gasol, you can't really rely on him to be a scorer, right? When Ibaka's struggling, I think you got to throw Boucher out there at the center and see what he can do at least at some point in the series. Okay, well, Gasol, first of all, Gasol was scoring on the on the pick-and-roll 
a lot tonight. I think he had five good rolls five to the buckets, basket. Yeah. Yep. So he was doing – he had an improved game this evening. I think mm-hmm. the difference was I don't care if Ibaka's out there. I don't care if Casal's out there. I wanted Boucher instead of Siakam for most of the game. And the switch finally happened when Siakam stopped trying to take a man off the dribble – because it's guards. It's Jalen Brown that's guarding them. It's athletic guards that are better at their ability to, to slide and stay in front as a defender than Siakam is with his ball handling. For now, right? They are better mm. to defend him. Now, Siakam's also been out of control in the post. So they're kind of neutralizing him. What the, that, that switch finally happened when Siakam stopped forcing things, played through the post... But passed. He made the right pass. And then finally, when the ball flowed around, instead of him going ISO, he was open. There was some good dump offs, mm-hmm. and he started making yeah. layups. That was the difference. In the first two games, he's trying to make mid rangers. He's trying to make fadeaways. He's trying to take his man off the dribble. Boston is too good on defense for him to do that. And the rest of the Raptors team is skilled enough. They don't need him to do it. Right? Yep. Right? So to me, that's why this game got so much better. So to answer your question, yeah, maybe Boucher could come out for a little bit. I wanted him, for, him, him in for Siakam, but when Siakam started playing good, I, I, I thought that six moment rotation was perfect. Yeah, that, that's fair. And Norman Powell sort of picked up at the end as well. Went over three from the free throw line, which is weird, but Riker, just, just another second on that OG shot. That's, a, that's the only thing really I'm just taking over my mind. It's all I see on repeat right now. Just, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Then I, you know what? I just want to collect it all as a bunch of feathers, <laughs> stuff them into a jacket, and just let that keep me warm during the winter, Ben. That, it was a magical shot. You know, it's one of those ones, <laughs> I, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'd i love to just get a bow and arrow and just make a couple of steaks out of it, fry them up, eat them real slow, medium rare, <laughs> no sauce, Ben. Just a little bit of steak rub. Oh, that it was perfect. It was the most perfect shot we've ever seen as a Raptors fan base. One of the most perfect shots in NBA. It, it can't get more clutch than that, Ben. I, I've said that three times. It can't get more clutch. It can't. I thought I thought my life peaked at that Kawhi shot. It didn't. It didn't. My Raptors fan life. My fandom as a Raptors. I don't even know what I'm saying. Let's. Let's just say, I guess the OGs too got to go to that shot. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing more we can talk about with the spicy P layer OGs, but there is a Damari Carroll gold star award. I want to throw out there Riker. And it's, I know we're having the segment a little bit early and we can probably talk more longer after, but Kyle Lowry was in the paint and this Brad Wanamaker guy comes in and just absolutely knees him right, right below the belt. It was like, it was an ugly shot. It hurt to watch just seeing that. That was, you know, and then obviously Lowry got it reviewed and they didn't call it a flagrant foul. I thought it was going to be called, not a flagrant one, not a flagrant two. I thought it was going to be called a flagrant five because that was just disgusting, Riker. Yeah, that one that one actually really hurt to watch because it you hurt could to, feel Yeah, that's that. what I'm saying. It was gross. Like, As it a was, man, you ugh. could you could feel that. You Phantom limb or whatever you call it. <laughs> it really was painful. <laughs> And the only thing is, Ben, that's just proper layup form. You know, one, two, up, you know, your knee goes up. I I don't think he was thinking, I'm going to throw my knee into Lowry's groin. I'm going to ruin this man's life. But you could see Lowry's a guy he likes to embellish, and his hip just got blown back in the air. That was, He took that full force right into the gonards, and that hurt all parts of my being. Bro, after that, after that play, you knew something good had to happen for the Raptors because that was just, that was just gross. That was just, I don't know. Like obviously, I'm sure it wasn't on purpose by Wanamaker, but just the sight of it, I thought a flagrant six. There should have been a flagrant a hundred out of that because that just, that just sucked. <laughs> ben, Ben, I bet you his wife is watching thinking i'm glad we already have two kids because there's no way <laughs> we're gonna be able to have another one but how did he how did he do that after how did he just have like a, a all-time great raptors performance after that happened because lowry was just attacking the rim being aggressive tonight i don't know it's this is the most incoherent podcast i think we've ever had right <laughs> here 
Well, that's it. How about we wrap it up and let's make a full breakdown of the rest of the series tomorrow or something like that. I'm I'm sure that people watching this just want to hear the first two minutes of our reaction, anyways, Ben. And what an incredible yeah. performance! What what I mean? Can you imagine getting frustrated with this game? Maybe not seeing it. Maybe closing your eyes for half a second. Uh, this this is going to go down in history as one of the greatest shots ever. It was just it was a pleasure to be able to witness that in real time, Ben. If we win this series, because you know shots like this have to have context. You know, they, they have to have something around them. And obviously, Kawhi's shot has that Game 7. They won the championship. But if we just come back and win this series, I am in complete agreement with you. This would have to go down as, like, the great... This might be a hot take. I feel like maybe it's recency bias or whatever. But the, the you know, being down, we lose the game if he misses. It's got to be that shot. It's got to be that shot in Raptors history. OG. And if we win the title, there's going to be an OG statue out in front because that's that's what it deserves. But let us know what you guys think. Maybe we're just going a bit too wild. You're the best to make this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Got some Instagram lives going. We had some technical issues. I tried to get the double lives going. But the IG lives have been fun, the, this playoff series. So definitely check that out. And hopefully the Raptors make them more and more exciting as we go along. But, uh, Riker, any last words? Cut your hair, Ben. Cheers. Get out of here, Chief. Get out of here, Chief. I cut it yet like two days ago, bro. <laughs> Get those scissors back out. <laughs> bro, my, my cut looking fresh, bro. No. Cheers. <laughs>